Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. Today is Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Um, quick announcement before we get started with tonight's news. Uh, as you noticed last night, we did not come on live <clears throat> uh, here at the Grand Solar Minimum Channel. We thought it was important to get outside and do some field work. It's been 181 days since the last time Buffalo, New York had temperatures in the 70s. And I don't know about you folks, if you were on the East Coast yesterday, it was a glorious day. And with the long winter that we had, uh, it was really hard to get everybody in the house yesterday. So uh, we made a judgment call at the end, but um, I'm pretty sure most of you enjoyed your evening as well uh, with this gorgeous weather out here on the East Coast. However, that's changed, and we'll get into that here just in a second. Let's take a look at our solar conditions. Right now, we're sitting at a 365.7 kilometers per second with a 4.8 density. Our sunspot 2706 has a stable magnetic field and poses no threat for strong solar flares. And I'll show you the proof of that here just in a second. Taking a look, that's sunspot number 22. Still sitting at 67 days without sunspots. Looking at our KP indices, we're sitting at a 2, and our 24-hour max is also a 2, so no storm conditions today. And here is the next coronal hole that the SDO that they're looking at now that they may uh, have to worry about sometime on the 26th of uh, April. A very minor possibility of a G1, but nevertheless, they say that this uh, coronal hole stream might actually uh, kind of buzz the magnetic field. So they're just, it's a minor alert, but just wanted to bring that to your attention. And here we are looking at AR2607, uh, I'm sorry, 2706. Um, very impressive. It's got its act together for sure. And I wanted to show you guys the proton flux right now. And right now we're quiet. So as impressive as this sunspot truly is right now, um, it's just quiet. So no solar flares, nothing expected. And that's good news because we're getting ready to be uh, earth facing with this thing. So <clears throat> take a look at our TSI. Uh, we've got readings right now at 1360.664. That was as of April 17th. So again, we are staying in that 1360.6 value and it has not touched the 1360.7 since it looks like Oh, it's, it's been a minute. <laughs> so this has been on a steady decline. We'll go ahead and take a look at some headlines for today. Local communities to train for mass power outage scenario. Now, Mari and I saw this um, article. Actually, Mari found this one. And the reason why we're going to cover it tonight is that last year and the year before last, we had similar situations where certain smaller cities or bigger cities had a what they called a blackout drill. And a lot of misinformation had been passed around about the cities were actually going to pull the plug and just go lights out for an hour. Well, that's not the case here. Uh, the National Guard in Wisconsin is helping communities prepare for a possible long-term mass power outage. Now, I wonder why that is. Full-scale training ex exercise known as Dark Sky is May 15th through the 17th in Brown, Calumet, Dane, Fawn, Duluca, Milwaukee, Aragami, and Winnebago counties. Utility companies, law enforcement, and first responders will also be a part of this simulation. And this was where all the confusion was the last time this happened last year and the year before. Uh, people didn't understand when they saw utility companies, law enforcement, first responders are participating. That just means they're going to simulate what would happen if the power goes out. And it's quoted here, the what ifs. We're trying to fill those spots for the what ifs, says Rob Olson uh, out of Gaming County Emergency Management. The National Guard says the public may notice military presence and increased emergency personnel during the exercise. Do not worry. The National Guard says the training exercise is to prepare for a, a possible attack on the state's infrastructure. Our emergency management community must be prepared to deal with the myriad scenarios and challenges po poised by long-term uh, mass power outage. And by training together, we continue to build meaningful relationships that leave us better positioned for a uh, response to a real-world situation. No homes will lose power, but simulations will take. Again, that's all that means. They're just going to pretend 
that it's going to be simulated. Uh, emergency workers, police officers, everybody's going to be in on it. So it's going to look like something's going on, but it's just a drill. And, you know, I think this is a little bit fear mongering when they say they're preparing for an attack, a possible attack. Um, you know, not saying that that wouldn't be a possibility, but the first thing that came to my mind with this was solar flares, Carrington event. Um, we see cities around the country t doing these exercises almost on a yearly basis now, and it's good to see. And this is part of the reason why a lot of us in the Grand Solar Minimum community believe that people are going to pull together and get through this one. <clears throat> Severe weather outbreak, tornado risk poised to strike central U.S. next week. Why am I mentioning this today? Uh, we have not no severe weather to speak of at this moment. So I want to give the heads up for next week. A change in the weather pattern is likely to trigger one or more rounds of severe weather, including tornadoes over the central United States next week. Areas at risk for severe weather and perhaps tornadoes may extend from the plains, the Mississippi Valley, and possibly farther east from the Great Lakes region to the Tennessee Valley. So the overall magnitude and coverage and timing of the severe weather during the first week of May will depend on the speed and strength of a pair of storms moving out of the Rockies into the Plains, according to AccuWeather lead long-range meteorologist Paul Pastock. Uh, most likely, storms that develop next week will include the full spectrum of severe weather, ranging from strong wind gusts, large hail to frequent lightning strikes and flash flooding. Uh, now, the south has not been a stranger to the uh, heavy rains as of late, but uh, this week, this past week, and so far early this week, I'd say that most of the country has gotten off the hook when it comes to serious weather, and we definitely deserved it. Uh, it seems like since January, we've actually, late December, we've had storm after storm after storm. All the links are in the description box. Records prove that March was cold. Well, yes, they do. Taking a look here, March 2018 was the coldest March in five years, but it also rate the second coldest to 2013. In my records, going back nearly 30 years, afternoon temperatures were logged at 8 degrees Celsius, considerable 2 degrees Celsius below normal, while nighttime temperatures were 1.8 Celsius and were 1.5 Celsius below normal. The average temperature was 4.9, a significant 1.7 Celsius below normal. It was also an extremely wet month of 98.4 millimeters of rain fell, which is twice the usual figure and has made the wettest March in Leicestershire since 1947. I probably butchered that big time. This is in the UK as well. The month began with a Siberian blast that established itself late February. First proved to be the coldest That's March day. Leicestershire. <clears throat> Leicestershire. Leicestershire. Thank you for interrupting. <laughs> you know me. Just you know me, Jake. Leicestershire. Okay. Well, we learned something together and here at the Grand Solar well, so, hey. Yours sounded way better. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the report here. One of the coldest months, not just here in the United States, but I wanted to point out this headline as uh, we're still we're still analyzing news from March, folks. That's how many records were broken. Uh, they're still analyzing data from that. And thank you, Mari, for the grammar lesson. If I'm right at all. Well, I mean, like I said, I've yours. Had exposure to the, <laughs> over the pond, so yours, yours sounded may, better than mine. I may be closer than you. That's all I'm saying. Arizona's cold season just set a record high temp. Of all heat records Arizona has set in recent years, here's one you probably haven't considered. Arizona just set a record for its warmest cold season, according to NOAA. Um, the cold season for those of us who we didn't know had such a thing existed is a six month period from October 1st to March 31st. The average temperature for Arizona's most recent cold season was 52.6 degrees. The 20th century average, uh, for that statistic is 50 or 47.8. Uh, of course we're not, um, dealing with any lack of warmth right now in Arizona as they are in extreme drought situation right now and fire hazards. Uh, the figure uh, is one is 0 0.01 degrees warmer than New Mexico over the same period of time of 0.35 degrees warmer than the continental United States for the last 50 years. Cold things warm faster. Uh, if you guys want to check this out, go to azcentral.com for more information. Taking a look at a uh, here's another baseball story. <clears throat> you know me. I like to follow these. Uh, but this is something that I thought was going to happen last year. And it's actually happening this year. Um, when I first became um, 
well versed in starting to learn about the grand solar minimum what entails with this with the cosmic ray increase that i was reading about i thought last year we were going to see a lot of rainouts, but here we go already 26 games have been postponed due to weather this season now that is a record this breaks major league be uh, record for the most weather related postponements through april the postponements were either due to rain snow ice or even cold temperatures the tigers which they overtook the royals uh they lead the pack right now with six home games postponed and it was the kansas city royals who were the most affected by the weather thus far but sunday night's rain in south that triggered the 26th postponement the season uh, this time it was for the braves and the mets it was set to take place at brave stadium that record was broken from a 2007 uh, season mark that was set and records dating back to 86 so according to the associated press there were 26 through april of 2007 but one was due to a death of st louis pitcher josh hannick so uh, technically it wasn't weather related but still there were 26 postponements and i actually remember that year too as well rain developed in atlanta late sunday morning and persisted the rest of the day the game was rescheduled for a monday may 28th as part of a memorial day night doubleheader Last Wednesday's game between the Cardinals and Cubs also marked the 25th game because it was blanketed with snow. The game in Chicago was called off for about uh, four and a half hours because the first pitch, it was raining and snowing. It was in the mid-30s. It was rescheduled for the next afternoon. Then it was sunny and high in the mid-40s. Officially, 0.4 inches of snow fell at the airport, Chicago O'Hare, on April 18th. And their average high is around 60 degrees at this point in the year. Last Wednesday's postponement was the fourth of the Cubs' first of Homestead this season, as well as the third in four days. So um, we touched base with this about um, possibly shortening the seasons a couple days ago on the program. And with April, with a record-breaking 26 games canceled, and we still have a few more days left, folks. Um, so hold on, that record might be crushed. Link's in the description. From blizzards to floods and fires in a week. No rest for the weary in weather in uh, Minnesota. We've gone from heavy snow to wildfire season in a week. Warm temperatures and dry winds fan a wildfire east of Nisawa. And uh, that's near, I think that's Brainerd Monday. We're looking at uh, flood warnings on the dotted part of the map. Southern Minnesota as all the snow is rapidly melted and ran off into the rivers. Here's a chart looking at uh, where we're at right now, flood levels, and they are not predicting this to be a major flood level, but however, it will be moderate, and that's quite a bit considering, you know, like they just said, we had blizzards, and now the rapid uh, melt is causing the floods, so plus we are looking at rain as well. And here's a current look at our radar right now, uh, mainly southwest Minnesota is affected with the storms and showers nothing heavy today so nothing that was significant enough to add to the totals another flood flash alert here a flash flood i should say reported flash floods and disease since the second week of april have left hundreds of thousands of people in need of immediate humanitarian support now this is in ethiopia uh, Somalia also has seven zones. Uh, there's several areas that are affected by it right now by reoccurring floods. And we've already reported on a couple of them in Kenya, flash floods that's killed people. In Somali region, more than 27,000 flood-affected households, 165,000 persons, by the way, need urgent food, water, health services, and NFI support. Overflow of the Ganali and the Wabi uh, Shebel rivers and related tributaries due to the recent heavy rains in Somali region and the highlands of the Amora has affected more than 83 Keebles and 19 Waraz. Hmm. So we've, like I said, we've seen, uh, this is almost a common story right now. Uh, they've gotten a large amount of rain in a short amount of time, causes flash flooding. Uh, there has been people that's been injured and killed. Uh, I think I'll have to look at something real quick. On the watchers i do have this for us though uh violent explosions today at the stromboli volcano in italy the first explosion took place at 905 utc and emitted abundant ash along with indes 
incandescent material in large lava blocks up to 250 meters above the crater that fell in a summit area and along the area now the explosion was followed by a second explosive at 906 UTC so one at 905 and a second explosion at 906 and there was a third one that took place at 910 UTC as well uh, violent explosion sequences such as this one are classified as major explosions and these also occurred on March 7 and 18th of 2018 and also in 2017 on July 26th October 23rd November 1st and December 1st so uh, lots of activity in 17 and so far 2018 now we have seen a few major eruptions so we will keep our eye on Stromboli this is not the first time we've had to talk about them Crop loss, BJP urges governor of ESL Nazmaram to pay farmers. Uh, Telaganga delegation on Monday urged the governor to direct the state government to help farmers who lost their crops due to recent unseasonal rains implement. Now, listen, I, I bring this up because we're in April and there are so many crop loss stories coming out of India right now. And last week I covered a story that talked about where uh, some of the farmers have not received their uh, their their funds yet from 2016 and 17. Um, due to these major rains here, a major damage has occurred as well. They claim that agriculture department officials were yet to visit agriculture fields to assess crop loss. Any loss of time in taking up this exercise will not help in assessing the actual damage, they said in the representation. So uh, they appealed to the government to pay 35000 per acre for a loss of mango, 25000 per acre for paddy, and 20000 per acre for maize and vegetables. Link will be in the description as well. Checking out another headline here. New farming technology help preserves root crops. This is a short one, but I wanted to get it out here. A Vermont University professor's idea is changing how farmers store root crops over the winter. Chris Callahan of the University of Vermont reports extension has induced or I'm sorry, introduced the Vesta control system. The device controls humidity to help crops such as carrots stay healthy in the colder months. Callahan says he was inspired by the trend of Vermont farmers looking to operate year round. Uh, Jericho Setters Farms owner Mark uh, Fasching says he experienced about 20 percent carrot crop loss. Over the last four years so with new device priced at about two grand he says this uh, crop loss is now at a two percent so good to see that they are coming up with new technology to help people uh, store root crops better over the winter and what a great time for this kind of technology to become available as well vegetable growing season set back by new england cold spell in april and that is another common headline that we've also read off to you guys now affecting New England, the cold, wet weather this month has set vegetable growing season behind in some parts of New England, and some farmers are already dealing with crop loss. Seeds for sweet corn, peas, beets did not make it for some farmers who were affected by the false start to spring in the first place. Other growers who planted seedlings for onions, cabbage, and beets have lost some of those plants as well. That's according to Katie Campbell Nelson, a vegetable expert with UMass Extension in Amherst. She said Mother Nature has done growers no favor so far, but can still lend a helping hand. Even though we're getting a later start to seeds actually going into the ground, she said this. the hope is that when it warms up, it'll warm up really quickly. And as soon as we get going, we'll catch right up to where we usually are during the growing season. Well, that will be yet to see. Um, and I will go over a, a quick weather update as well here just in a minute. But this is an awesome picture. This is Cosmic Rays in this GIF. This image was taken from back in 2016. It's a Cosmic Winter Wonderland. Comet 67P is awash in what looks like snow in this series of images from the ESA uh, Rosetta spacecraft. Now, this is a picture of, I believe, a passing by comet. The images were captured over the course of 25 minutes on June 1st, 2016. Amazing pictures. This is awesome. So here we get a first look at Cosmic Rays. And I'm sure some of you, this looks familiar to the Lasco, where we saw that phenomena where it looked like it was snowing around the sun on the blue Lasco. And in fact, that was particles, 
cosmic rays more than likely but this is an awesome image and I thought I'd share this with you guys tonight uh, much of this apparent snow would actually be visible if you were standing on the comet surface it is made of cosmic rays charged subatomic particles that felt across the universe as they hit the camera sensors they register as streaks of lights some of the bright specks are actually snow dust and ice particles floating above the comet surface and as many of them are stars behind the rocky cliffside of 67p surface so uh, links in the description and again I, I just I'm a geek when it comes to this kind of stuff and this kind of photography video image this is the kind of stuff that uh, that makes me feel like a kid again and it's Christmas let's take a look at this last story before we get into our weather is your smartphone threatened by the cosmos you're on your smartphone or computer listening to music or watching a movie and the device suddenly stops working it freezes then reboots in most cases it's believed to that it's a minor thing such as outdated software aging equipment maybe it's an Android and behind these malfunctions um, so you know a simple reboot will help right well actually cosmic rays are a type of natural radiation that occurs in space and some rays travel to the earth generating smart particles uh, upon hitting earth's atmosphere these particles are called neutrons and muons are constantly entering the atmosphere they are said to fall into the area the size of a human palm about once a second but they are so small that they can pass through most obje objects even our bodies we cannot feel them as they pass what happens when the cosmic ray hits a semiconductor the engine of the electronic device it sets off a reaction that partially corrupts the data stored in the semiconductor since it's an electrical reaction the device and the circuit itself are left undamaged but the data is corrupted and even the slightest corruption can lead to malfunctions because of integrated circuits these days are these days are very small and precisely designed this is how cosmic rays are believed to cause malfunctions known as soft errors so interesting uh, the link will be in the description for this as well um, I know I've experienced this issue several times before I switched over to Apple products and um, this is interesting now to think about it because I don't know if people notice maybe an increase of their phones doing these what they call soft errors so if you're an Android user I know uh, it rarely happens to Apple users where the I've, I've never had it happen on my phone anyway but um, pay attention see we see how many times this happens take a look at your space weather are we uh, getting bombarded with solar winds are, are the KPs increased I'm curious myself that I'm gonna keep track of this and uh, and hopefully this is uh, some accurate research but they're saying researchers now are saying that cosmic rays are affecting not just the GPS and satellites but it could be messing with your smartphone as well before I get into the weather I want to say hello to everybody in the chat Mari how's everything going tonight pretty good Jake that's good to hear I know we've uh, <clears throat> people are, are talking and I'm just trying to keep up because uh, I got a little distracted. That's all right. Good so, to see everyone in there. Not looks like we got quite a few in there. So yeah, it looks like a lot of people, uh, at least in the Northeast, were enjoying the nice weather. Oh man. Uh, we had someone ask about the cold temps coming over to the UK. There's a low pressure system affecting that area. So I, I did yeah. see that. I did see <laughs> that. Um, I, I read briefly on it as well before we went on tonight. Did, did you start me into a video on that yet? I'm not sure. I, I feel bad I haven't been on YouTube today. We haven't so. really been online for the past two days because we're taking advantage of just getting spring cleaning. And well, cleaning, cleaning and yard work. Like, and I, to, I told everyone in the chat we finally got our Christmas decorations down. <laughs> <off the porch. laughs> well, I mean, look, it was snowing. <laughs> so why take it down if it's snowing outside, right? Okay, seriously. <laughs> Let's take a look at our weather real quick, guys, at the GFS map here. Someone did request Hawaii if we have time. I will see what I can do for you guys if this thing does not hang up on me here. But we'll take a look uh, really fast. Actually, um, looking at the GFS, this is current right now. Uh, we're dealing with some light showers moving through the northeast and the east coast. Sticking around through, oh, it looks like Wednesday into Thursday. I know Western New York will feel the effects before we start to dry out. And then we get a batch of moisture clip the south really quickly, though. Nothing real heavy. And as you see, that low pressure kind of just runs up the east coast. 
and along with it it drags a little bit more moisture but that does stay all rain now the encouraging thing and I know some of you are still fans of the snow but right now most of our snow showers are in the higher elevations of Colorado in Canada we got a little bit here in Minnesota maybe at the tip of Wisconsin possible the UP seeing some ice but I'm hoping as we continue to look at this uh, forecast that we are gonna see less and less chances for snow but as I'm looking to the Northwest on the 29th of April we've got a pretty good size of uh, heavy snow to fall in Idaho and believe it or not the Northeast upstate New York you're looking at chances for snow uh, we do see a dip in temperatures here as well uh, late this week on the weekend we're doing a dip back into the mid 40s before we recover back to spring like conditions and then look at the northwest that's a mess snow in Idaho and Nevada uh, parts of it looks like Wyoming uh, parts of northern Utah and of course in the Colorado uh, mountain areas as well and we move this forward into the last day of April Again, getting a little bit of a break here in the south and the east here for a few days. And the reason for that, we've got high pressure that's just kind of camping off here on the coast in North Carolina. And that sticks around through the 1st of May and doesn't really want to go anywhere. But uh, even when it's trying to be pushed off by this huge low pressure system that's forming on the back end on the 2nd of May, I think finally that low pressure system is strong enough to maybe slightly push this high pressure system off to the Atlantic and it does advance and here we go this is good news too. parts of eastern Texas and parts of northern uh, New Mexico and some slight chances in Arizona as well but this is not enough rain guys the type of drought that they're experiencing right now and I don't have to really repeat that everyone knows very interesting setup here on the GFS as we look at this low pressure system it almost looks like it forms a complete circle but as we move forward into Friday of May 4th we've got a huge uh, swath of moisture that goes from the tip of Maine all the way back to central Texas and that will also advance pretty quickly as well but as that one moves out we get a little bit of redevelopment behind it and just your typical spring type pattern here folks we're gonna see rain I did see snow my goodness probably in the upper elevations of Wyoming however uh, it is May 8th and we are still looking at chances of snowfall in certain parts of the United States and as I forward out to the end of this run which is May 10th we'll see we'll see if this holds I don't I don't see any blue I'm looking at I know I've got friends who will break out the magnifying glass and find a tiny speck in uh, dime box Montana so I'll wait for that to happen. Let's go ahead and take a look at Hawaii real quick before I move on to our temperatures. Let's see where we got to go here, Central Pacific. And guys, you know, typical uh, tropical tidbits is a little bit limited in certain areas. Fortunately, it does look like they have a little bit of a rain. Here we go. So we know about the flooding that they had uh, not too long ago, and let's hope that we don't see any more atmospheric rivers or just heavy bands of moisture set up and take place here. And I'll go ahead and run this through, speed it up a little bit. And it does seem pretty active out in the Pacific. Thank you, Mari. That's, that's yeah. It does seem pretty active in the Pacific. Um, high pressure is trying to dominate. What did I do? It wasn't me. It wasn't. It was me. Yeah, I, I hit pause. So it does look like we're going to have some activity for Hawaii. Uh, you're weak. Let me go ahead and see if I can get the dates for you. I'll slow it back down. Let's start it back over here, guys. I apologize. So Hawaii, you're going to be dealing with off and on rain showers starting today. Uh, the high pressure system is trying to build in, but these lows keep forming and bring in scattered rain showers to uh, Hawaii. Some of it does look heavy to moderate. And that's a quick look at the Pacific region there. For you folks out there, aloha. Let's go back to the continental U.S. Take a look at our temperatures real fast, and then I think we're going to call it a night. Again, thanks for tuning in, guys. We appreciate you being patient with this. Uh, we just couldn't resist. We were actually going to post a video just from being outdoors, but... 
even that was too much work for us as we were uh, just enjoying the yard work and the, the you know 73 degrees in Buffalo after what was a brutal winter in my opinion whether you're from Buffalo or not uh, very brutal we had frozen pipes we had fallen gutters we had ice we had snow we had floods we had ice jams so it was just nice to be able to get back out and feel that sun once again and I know uh, you know what we do here at this channel with what we know uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to cherish every bit of warm blue sky day that I can find in the forecast. And I wanted to go over real quick um, as well with the temperatures because there was going to be a little bit of a cool down. And not a lot though. Uh, May 2nd, the northwest is what they're looking at. And that's where we see the most chances for snow is going to be out in the northwest into Idaho and Wyoming and Montana. And as you see, it's still relatively cool. But as we get into May... And, you know, the only areas that I don't see a significant warming and, you know, not that it's surprising, but this has been kind of the trend all year long is that northeast corner, starting with Ohio, northeast Ohio and on to the east. We're still seeing temperatures. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be May 9th. We're looking at temperatures in the mid 50s. Uh, northeast Ohio, you're at 48 degrees. Meanwhile, you've got temperatures in Phoenix at 108 degrees. So these are daytime highs for May 9th. That's a Wednesday. So that's still some time out. But um, just interesting to see all the models that we see on Twitter. Uh, Judah Cohen uh, does a really good job at forecasting with GFS models and temperatures and everything. I've gotten a lot of my heads up this year from some of his info with the cold weather. So, But his forecast as well is we see a warm-up of spring-like temperatures. And then we kind of we get a lull in the spring-like temperatures this week. Uh, starting tomorrow here for us in the Northeast and I'll stop it here this is April 22nd let's move it forward so we go into Wednesday and as you'll see here in the 60s to start the day but the temperature drops and here we are on this is Thursday and we're looking at uh, daytime highs in the 40 degree range here in Buffalo New York so um, not what we had just a few days ago 46 is the forecasted high for Thursday into Friday Start to get a little bit of a warm up on the weekend. Chance of rain as well on Saturday here in the Northeast. But for the most part, I think after next week, hopefully into the 1st of May, we can start banking on some warmer temps. But like I said, I was showing you here just a minute ago here in the Northeast. And I do see some days. I see some very in, in encouraging weather here coming up in the future. So hang on, folks. We'll get there. Hopefully we get some dry days where we get these farmers out here in the fields and get a planting because I know there's a lot of people chomping at the bit. Mara, would you like to say anything before we... Uh... We just have a wonderful group here at GSM. Love seeing you guys every night in the chat. So thanks for stopping by and you know, having giving your time to us to listen to our broadcast and sharing your thoughts with everyone else in the chat. It's excellent what we have going on here. Thanks, Mari. Appreciate it. Thank you again appreciate her work on the production of these videos and taking the time to put the links so you guys can research this on your own time as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. We'll talk soon.